Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and today I'm going to go over one of the um, inventory worksheet templates which is geared toward annual inventory or an end of year inventory count. So I actually have a lot of inventory worksheets to choose from and I have a video that goes over a kind of a summary of the different options that would work best for you and that's here under shop templates by category inventory tracking but today I'm gonna go over an example of just one of these um, and it's an annual inventory worksheet and this is geared for people who have to report your total cost of your beginning inventory as in the beginning of the year January 1st and then the total cost of your ending inventory December 31st and that's something that um, has to be reported on the Schedule C which is a US tax form. So this template is really to help in that process and it's not necessarily um, going to help you if throughout the year you want to see, oh, am I running low on a certain material? Do I need to reorder? It's not as much for that. Um, but if you're not in that position where you're not constantly trying to figure out what you need to reorder or you have a lot of inventory um, and that's not as much of a concern, this worksheet can help you keep track of your purchases and it makes reporting a whole lot easier especially when you have to reset for a new year so enough talking let me um, show you an example of how this works so this is the blank worksheet you would obviously come in here and fill out this information the green cells are the ones that you have to fill out okay and then the gray cells are going to be formulas that will calculate based on that information the white cells are there for your information but it's not you know critical that you have to fill every single thing out because who wants to do extra data entry not me um, I'm gonna come go back um, this is an old file with my first business which was jewelry and I sold a lot of wine charms back then. I'm just going to use this as part of my example to um, to show you how it would work. So let's just do a small set and so I would put this in here as the item description. Now one thing to note is that in this template you're going to want one row per item so right here I have bride charms listed twice um, that's okay if they're from a different vendor or there's something different about the bride charm so if the, if the price is different then you probably want it on a separate line because that's going to affect the cost so say we had two different prices for bride charms, we would enter them on two rows. And then the rest, it looks like, are not, no duplicates there. Um, then you would come over, you could fill out this information if you wanted. Um, the year purchased, you'll need to select whether it's purchased in a current year or a previous year. So if I'm talking about 2018, say it's we're now in 2019 but say I'm doing my inventory to report for taxes um, current year would be anything bought during 2018 and previous year would be anything bought prior to 2018 obviously um, and that makes a difference because you'll see uh, if it's current year then we're gonna skip this column and we're gonna go straight to column N and we're gonna say did the quantity change since I purchased it and we're gonna say no it stayed the same or yes it changed but I'm skipping ahead first we need to enter the original receipt of when you purchase this so say I purchased a quantity of 20 and the price that I paid was ten dollars I, I don't remember so I'm just making this up so my price per unit is going to calculate at 50 cents Again, I'm skipping this and going to the next. And did the quantity change? No, yes, it did change. Um, so then I'm gonna enter the actual amount. So this is if you are doing a physical inventory count, 
um, then this is where you're going to be entering in, okay, how much do I have left of that? Let's say we have a quantity of 10 left. Then it's going to give me my cost of the ending inventory. Um, it's showing this value in NA because I haven't filled this out yet. So for the Bridal Charms 2, say we did a previous year and we got 10 for $10. We didn't have um, find a really good supplier yet. So um, we were paying a dollar per unit. Now, since it was a previous year, we're still going to fill this out. The beginning inventory. So we're going to enter the quantity of that item at the beginning of the year. If you haven't kept track of your inventory in years before, this could be a little bit of a challenge. Basically, we're saying we bought 10 in a previous year from 2018. So we bought it in 2017. As of um, January 1st, 2018, that's what's supposed to go in the beginning inventory column, January 1st of the current year. So we're going to guess and we're going to say five. Okay. And did it change? Yes, it changed. You could, if you leave it the same, it will calculate the quantity. It'll automatically populate um, the same quantity for the end of the year amount. Or if you want to say it changed and say we sold that out, so zero left. Okay, so that kind of explains how to go through it and how to do your accounts. Let me just fill out set of information and then I'm going to show you the coolest part of this worksheet which is a macro that you can run that is going to reset the um, previous year's ending inventory and reset that for the current year and it's moving it'll move your ending inventory amount into your beginning inventory amount <clears throat> and then you can start over again new for the new year so let me just pull some information from here the quantity in the package. You'll see I have a formula in here, so I'm going to paste that formula out. Just do right click, paste special values, and that'll remove the formula. Purchased during the current year, so there was no beginning inventory um, as of January 1st. Did it change? We'll say that stayed the same. We'll say this one changed to 30, same, same. So you would just enter the uh, levels of your inventory for each item and say that you come to the end of the year and now you are ready to report your beginning inventory at $5 and your ending inventory at $58. So we're at the end of 2018, your ending inventory is $58. Now, save the file, and probably you're going to want to do file save as and add the year to the end before you do this. File save as and add the year to the end. Now, you have that information saved for your 2018 data. Do a file save as. And now you want to start over new for 2019. You just change the name of the date, I mean the name of the year at the end, save it again. Now you have the 2019 file, but what we have to do is move that 5897 now becomes your beginning inventory. So this is the fun part where um, you'll see I have a tab here called directions for the change to new year. So you can look this over and it also comes with a PDF with directions. Um, so basically we're going to view macros and we're running a macro name reset for the new year. So view macros reset for the new year and run. It might take a second and I probably have too many files open. Now, um, it took a second to run, but can you see what happened? It kept all the items here. It changed everything the previous year. It kept your original receipts, and now it changed the beginning quantity to what last year's ending quantity was. You'll see that ending inventory is also the same amount. 
it's going to stay this amount until you update the inventory. If it changes again, then you just enter um, the inventory levels that changed. And even if you're only going to do in the inventory counts at the end of the year, that's totally fine. You're going to want to use this file throughout the year to add when you make your purchases. So you would just scroll to the bottom of where it left off. You make a new purchase. Let's just say wine hoops. Now everything's going, everything that you purchase now during the year is now going to be a current year. So you'll change that to current year, enter the original receipt, um, which has the quantity and the price. And that's all you have to enter throughout the year until you come back. Um, to update and do a physical count of your inventory at the end of the year, or you could continue updating the physical counts as you go, ever you prefer. And then you do the same thing when it's the end of 2019. Uh, um, you'll have your beginning inventory, which stays the same. And then as you enter and update information, the cost of your ending inventory will update. And You'll get 2019 done, and then you'll reset the file again, just how we just did for starting your 2020 inventory. So I hope that makes sense, and I hope that helps. And um, again, you can find this template at timesavingtemplates.com. Don't forget to look for a coupon code or a sign-up page for that. And don't forget, I am here to help you streamline and save time when it comes to getting organized with Excel spreadsheets and your inventory.